raise your hand if you don't like going to a nice bar or a fancy restaurant by yourself. Now, raise it higher if you don't like going to the movies or a show by yourself. Now, I can't obviously see you, but if you're holding your hand up, just know that you are not alone. I am literally doing the same thing. I've got my hand held up very high. Uh, there's, I guess, several reasons. But just to cut right through, I think... The reality of that is that I would love to go to these places with someone, like an S-O, significant other, girlfriend, wife, Ooh, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. And I can of course do these with friends, and I have and I will, but you know, there's something different about going with someone that you're romantically interested in. Anyway, uh, but there's this local theater and this group does this show and I've been to it before. I love them. They're hilarious and I want to support them, right? And I've been putting it off. I've been wanting to go back been meaning to go back but yeah just keep pushing off because of that desire to go with someone also there is a bit of anxiety of going to these places alone there's something to be said about having a a partner in crime if you will you know uh, uh, either an exit plan someone to turn to to say hey I want to get out of here. Let's go. Or, you know, like a solid rock. So, hey, is it cool if we stay here for a little while longer? Now, ironically, of course, you could still do those things by yourself. I know this. Also, if you're still holding your hand up, you can lower your hand. I hope you haven't been holding it this whole time. So I've been putting it off and been meaning to do it, right? So the other night, I was getting that cabin fever, just feeling stuck inside. And it was within a half an hour of the show starting. And I knew that because I looked at the clock. I'm a genius when it comes to that. I could look at a clock and I know that if the show starts at 8 and it's 7.30, well then I know that means it's half an hour until the show starts. Uh, Alright, uh, but yeah. So when I saw that, and having that feeling of being stuck inside, I made an executive decision. I was good to go. Now luckily as a man, it takes, what, 50 seconds to get ready? So, just a quick change up, boom, I was ready to go. But for no real reason, I added a stipulation to stepping out. I wasn't going to bring my cell phone with me. I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like you have to be comfortable just being in those awkward situations and I feel like the phone is such an easy way to you know shield yourself from that environment I could go into a corner and just be on my phone and in my head like oh well like, I'm busy I'm looking at something oh my friend couldn't make it yada 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 right so I guess that was kind of why because it was like forcing me okay I can still go sit in the corner, but I'm going to have to be comfortable in the uncomfortable and not have that distraction. 
of a screen, the excuse to be distracted. Because uh, I'm I've been guilty of it, so I'm not saying, oh, I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty awesome. I don't have my phone. I, I I like to be in the moment. I don't like to be distracted. No, I'm definitely guilty of doing that in other places. That's why I made this executive decision. Stamped it, trademarked it, got rejected because you can't trademark it. So I went there, and the walk was really nice. I know, uh, it might be clear because I've made dozens, dozens of walking videos in Night City. I love walking in Night City. So that was great. But yeah, if you're like me and you have those anxieties, half the battle is getting out of the house. And then once you're there, once you're at the place you need to be, you're pretty good, right? So that was maybe part of the challenge too. Was get out, do it, follow through. Also a stipulation, no, not a stipulation, but a thing I hate being late hate it if I even in a movie where you know it's just the previews and that I hate showing up late and walking into a room late and that was one thing that was kind of on my mind was cutting it a little close with the time but that was another anxiety that brought along with me bring your feelings with and it was fine. I was early. I was, I had plenty of time to grab a drink and grab a seat. So it was perfect. And then, yeah, you know, you're there, you're sitting there. And there definitely is a little bit of, uh, you know, the jitters and the, the anxiety coming up in you coming up in you nope we're gonna leave it in anxiety is coming up in you <laughs> sitting there you're just waiting for the show to start and as I do I'm kind of looking around but trying not to look you know but I just notice people it's pretty easy to do when you're around people is to notice those people there were no one, at least what appeared to be, there was no one there else by themselves. I was the only person kind of sitting by myself, which is exactly what I don't like, right? Ugh, I'm the only one sitting by myself, really? But again, bring your feelings with. I'm uncomfortable with that. Well, that's the reality. Can't control it. Can't change it. I'm sitting there, stuck with my decision. Live with it. And so it was okay, you know, because it is what it is. And just sit there. But I noticed there was two friends sitting in front of me. You know, group to my left, and then. There was a couple behind me that were on a first date. It wasn't clear at first, but they were on a first date. And I wasn't trying to eavesdrop. I wasn't really. And I just kind of pick up here and there, but really not trying to, you know, eavesdrop. But I was okay with it, you know. And again, going in to this space, this show, this theater by myself and how I would like to be there with someone. So I couldn't help but try to put my feet in those shoes. Like, oh, that would be cool. That I would love to be on a first date right now like that in this place, a place that I enjoy. And if someone else enjoyed it, that would be really cool, right? And, again, I wasn't either, but I was just picking up a little things, and it just seemed nice and innocent. 
was cool. But then, you know, the lights dim and the show starts. And people are a good audience, so they're not obviously going to talk about their selves and all that. Everyone is there for the show. And myself included. And what's nice is that, you know, laughter is not voluntary. You could fake it for sure if you're not actually laughing and you could just be like, well, I'm going to pretend to laugh and uh, fit in that way, you know. But if something just makes you laugh, it's reactionary. It's, you know, putting your hand on the stove. You're going to feel it right away when it's hot, right? Laughter just gets out of you naturally. So, I just enjoyed the show. Shocker, right? But, as something that I've been putting off, and putting off, and putting off, making excuses to continue to put off, being there, being in that moment, and enjoying myself, enjoying my time, Enjoying the entertainment that these strangers are putting on for me. It was great. I really enjoyed it. So, even at that moment, I was glad that I had done it. That I had got out of my house, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but not totally, but a little bit. And followed through with this thing that I've been wanting to do. So, it was already a victory in my mind. And then, there comes the intermission. And the lights go back up. And I don't know how long the intermission is. But usually you assume, you know, 15 minutes, right? So that's 15 minutes where you have to kind of either sit there doing nothing if you're like me and don't have your phone. And I kind of had to go to the bathroom. But I could just see... You know, you can see the, the way the crowd moves, and I knew, okay, these people are going to the, the bathroom. That line's going to be long, and I don't really need to. And I would rather stay in my seat awkwardly than have to stand in a line. That would just be like, uh. And again, I can do these things when I need to, when I have to, when I want to. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just saying. When that option came, flip a coin, I'd rather sit. I'd rather stay sit. But, here's what happened. A couple behind me, they got up, presumably to go get drinks. Well, I know they went to go get drinks, because they came back with drinks. I'm very observant to your smart friend. And the two friends in front of me, they were sitting, they were kind of talking, but then at some point, both of them brought up their phone, and they just kind of sat there looking at their screens. And this isn't judging, this isn't the boomer, like, oh, these kids always on their phones, and they can't stay in the moment. I'm guilty of it. I'm just saying that's what it was. Nothing wrong with it, in my mind. even if I came into that environment with a different plan. Because that's what's wonderful about the world. We all have different perspectives, and we experience it differently. So, I don't know, maybe be kind and try to be more positive towards people you have no idea what they're doing, what they're going through. But yeah, you know, they were sitting there in silence. But even still, yeah, that's what I would have, I would have been okay with that if I had a friend. And we both did the same thing like that. You know, that's why I'm not trying to say I'm better or anything like that. It's just, oh. Because here I am, I just have to, you know, hold my hands together. And even then, I noticed I did do something. I had my arms crossed for like the first two minutes. 
but I didn't like that body language. I don't know why I became self-aware of it, but, you know, crossed arms, it's like, don't approach me. Even if I don't necessarily want to be approached, I don't want that. So I just, you know, interlocked my fingers, kind of held them on my lap, right? And I sat there. And surprisingly, you know, I didn't have to shake my knee. Uh, I didn't have to, you know, put my feet together or whatever. My body was actually comfortable after doing that. I guess because, again, that was the idea. And it's like, hey, I'm sitting here. I don't have a phone to distract myself. You know, way back in the day, even though I have had a cell phone most of my life, I've definitely worked jobs where, or just been in other situations. You have to be comfortable being just sitting there and doing nothing. I know I'm putting this together really elegantly. I'm just painting a beautiful picture for you. But you get what I'm saying, right? And then that couple returns to their seat, the couple behind me. And again, I'm not trying to, but they're talking. And then it became more clear, okay, they're on a first date. And I'm not going to talk about what they talked about, because I'll respect their privacy in that way. But you could tell there was, they were talking more than they were before. Questions back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And they were hitting on some, I don't know, big points or uh, something that seemed relevant and important to their situation. And I could feel it from both of them that talking about it uh, was a good thing, right? And I really noticed it when the show started back again because now the woman that was with the guy was laughing more. Now it's a comedy show and yes, things are starting to build up, you know, it's the second act, but I felt like it was doing good before so I'm not an expert but I'm just observant that her mood was better more improved Yeah, she just seemed more loose more relaxed she's laughing louder and then maybe because she's doing it maybe he's feeling it too I started to notice him laughing more too and while I am enjoying the show, I'm following along the show, there's also the part of me that was sitting there and enjoying and enjoying pronunciation and enjoying that they're enjoying their time. And I think, oh, I, no, I know, you know, 10 years ago, it, it would have been a bittersweet, like, yeah, that's sweet, but why not me? Ugh. It should be me then. But no, no, no. I'm with my decisions where I am sitting there by myself. I accept it. So I can be happy that these two are doing something that I would like to do. But they're enjoying themselves. So I found joy in that. I was grateful. And the rest of the show was great. Right? Laughing. And the show ends. And... You know, not everyone gets up right away. Some people do, but, you know, some people talk amongst themselves before they get up. Now, ironically, I wouldn't, I'm not going to lie, it would have been great if I had my phone to pretend to distract myself so I could sit there longer and eavesdrop, I guess, you know. It was a source of joy. I just wanted to... Maybe vicariously take some of their joy with me as well. Because they were definitely opening up more. And you could hear it. They couldn't wait to talk to each other when the show ended. And you could just sense they were having a better time. But I couldn't. I was like, I can't just sit here 
because that just feels weird. You know, you're waiting for the show, that's fine, but if you're waiting, sitting there after the show, yeah, you know, it's just like, I, I don't need to be here. So I got up, and as I was heading out in the lobby, because there's more shows in the late night, I did kind of notice someone that I recognized someone, I should say. A friend from back in the day. And even though I've talked to him dozens of times, a bunch of times, maybe it's a toxic trait of mine where I have conversations with people and then I just assume that they completely forget about me. So I recognized him, but I thought, oh, well, he probably doesn't, probably doesn't recognize me. But, sure enough, actually when we got closer, I said, oh, well, you're a smart friend. Now, he didn't actually say that, but you can keep following along. I was like, oh my god, let's call you Brad. Now, I didn't actually say that, but you get it. Brad. And we chatted up for just a little bit. Still time before he's going to the next show and I can leave whenever. Still some time to catch up. Because we hadn't talked for, you know, it's probably been five years. Pre-pandemic. Maybe during. And it was cool because I knew that he was interested in writing. And he would write short stories. And that's how we bonded, actually. Because I also used to like to write and we talked about that. And so he had asked me, like, oh, are you still writing? No, not really, actually. But he was working on a novel. And that is something I used to be interested in. I practically made it my identity in my mid-twenties. <laughs> oh, I'm going to write a novel. Yeah, you're working on it? N well, I got some ideas. <laughs> uh... But yeah, he mentioned that he actually wrote several drafts during lockdown and finally had one that he's been trying to publish and now he's working on a second one that he would also like to publish. And I just thought, wow, that's so cool. Like, here he is. We had these conversations about writing his book and here he is still going for it. And of course, it's like an iceberg. There's maybe that 10% that I would still like to do that. That would be cool if I would have the ideas, time, and resources, blah, blah, blah. I guess that idea of writing a novel still stays within me. But also, I've let go. Letting? I've let go of it. And it's been fine. It's been good. I realize that I want to tell stories in a different way. Film, photos, YouTube, OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, subscribe, by the way. No, but it was really nice. So even though... You know, that was only like between like three, uh, three to five minutes. You know, it was like five minutes, 22 seconds to be exact. No, I wasn't keeping count. But yeah, just a couple of minutes. So walking home, I was very happy that I decided to do this. Going from pushing it off could have been easily pushed off again. The procrastinator, such as like writing that novel going to this show just I'll get to it eventually and I'll do it later I'm certainly guilty of that still in other areas which is why I was happy with myself that I went to this show now it might not seem huge or like a big deal But again, I can't explain my entire life and my entire experiences just as you couldn't explain yours to me. 
we're all fighting this battle, right? So, if you're still raising your hand, by the way, you don't have to keep them raised. But if you are raising your hand from earlier, that you don't like to go to these places by yourself. It might not be that, that exact situation for you. But maybe you're just putting something off that you keep putting off. It has to come from within you to do it. So I don't want to be like, oh, you know that thing you're putting off? Put it down right now and go do it. Go do it. Go do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I mean, sure, do it. End of the day, it has to be you if you're comfortable with it. And again, that's a tricky word, perhaps, because just like this, even though I've been to this place... I wouldn't say it's out of my comfort zone, but pushing it off and making these excuses and procrastinating. Okay, I need to jump out of that comfort of doing that and go to this thing. And that's what I did. And that's what it was about. And the reward, the show would have been a reward enough, right? Because it was funny. It's also leaving the house. Going for that walk, going to the theater, getting the ticket, sitting down, all of it. That experience was worth it too. And the cherry on top, running into an old friend. And I just felt very rewarded by that. I want to go again next week. And now that I've done it, after not doing it for so long, if I just choose yes next week, then it just gets easier, right? We're all fighting a battle that no one sees. So whatever this type of situation is for you, something you're putting off, something you're procrastinating, uh, you keep denying yourself of, saying no to, I'll do it. I encourage you to look within and ask yourself why and what if you did? Because I guess I've been getting too comfortable of saying, I, I could if I want to, I I'll do it later. Do it now. If you can do it now, do it now. I said it once and I'll say it again. Be kind to yourself and be well to 